Welcome to IELTS Dragon. First of all, thanks a lot for visiting this channel. Today, let's answer the recent topic in IELTS Speaking Part 1 about breaks or break time. Let's learn what the word break really means, as this is a bit confusing for some, since they don't know what kinds of break they have to talk about in their answers. In this lesson, I'll teach you how to avoid confusion about this topic and let us use some very helpful topic vocabulary words that can guide us in creating better answers that will surely help us achieve a band 7 or even a band 9 in IELTS speaking. But before we start, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to support this channel by clicking the subscribe button for you to be updated with the recent video lessons of the recent IELTS speaking topics. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's get started. First question, do you prefer a long break or several breaks? I cannot choose between the two because both a long break and several breaks are beneficial to me. Indulging long breaks like traveling helps me widen my perspective on life. As you know, traveling opens the door of great opportunities that can help people understand life better, such as learning cultural differences, lifestyles, traditions or customs, and the like which to me is refreshing. On the other hand, doing several breaks recharges my batteries, most especially when I have a pile of paperwork to do in the office. Okay, so let's examine how I answered this question. Here, I was very honest of my attitude toward the question, telling the examiner that I couldn't choose one over the other because both give advantages to me. And because of that, I just explained each of them as to what kind of benefits I got having any of those kinds of break. It's a realistic and relatable answer. So if it's hard for you to choose between two choices, then it's better to answer this way. Now let's continue. Second question. What do you usually do during a break? Let me read the first answer. I'm not sure what the word break means here. If it's a short break from work, like 20 to 30 minutes, I usually sip some coffee to help me awake and re-energize my mind. If it means days off, more often than not, I binge watch TV series or movies on Netflix or spend time outside gardening. On the other hand, if you're talking about a long break, like a week or two, I seize the opportunity to see places where I've never visited yet. All right, let's talk about my answer here. Well, that question was confusing to me as the word break has a lot of meanings. As I did not want to limit my answer, what I did was I provided the examiner the different types of break that I enjoyed having and talked about the different activities that I do whenever I have those kinds of breaks. It's a great technique that you can use whenever you're a bit confused with the question. Now let's continue. Before we continue answering the third and fourth questions of this topic, let's have a quick review of what the word break means. Well, if you're a worker, Break could mean your lunch break or your tea break. This is a short break from your work. Well, it could also mean your day off. That's when you have your rest day. You're free to do whatever you want as you need not go to the office. Or the word break could also mean holiday. This is a long break that is a week long or even a month. On the other hand, if you are a student, the word break means a school break or a semestral break. Like when the first term finishes, normally a semestral break will last two weeks, but depending on which country you are from. So each country has different rules of a school break. There's also a summer or winter break in school, but then again, this depends on which country you come from because some countries do not have winter break especially those tropical countries anyway my point here is do not be confused with the word break 
when you get this topic in your actual IELTS speaking exam. Think about these ideas so that you will know how to talk about this topic smoothly and confidently. Now let's continue. Third question. When do you usually have a break? Let me read the first answer. Thankfully, my days off fall on weekends. Saturday and Sunday are my favorite days of the week as I can be with my family. Saturday is usually a lazy day for me, just playing with my children or watching some cartoons with them. And Sunday is the time when we eat out and spend some time at the park. All right. Here, I started answering that question on a positive note, saying thankfully. Then I immediately talked about my days off. Right after that, I talked about how I spent my free time with my family, making some wonderful activities with my children, and of course, with my wife. So it's not enough to just answer the question when. You have to add some more ideas to your answer like what I did so that you'll be able to express yourself better. That's a great way to extend your answer. Now let's continue. Fourth question, how often do you have a break? Let me read a second answer. Well, our company provides us with a 30 days paid holiday a year. So I always divide it in half. I spend my first 15 days leave in summer and the other one in winter. All in all, I can take a break from work twice a year. All right, here I talked about one of the great benefits my company offered to all of us as workers, which is the 30 days paid holiday. Then I answered the question by stating that I divided that one month paid holiday twice which I normally spend every summer and winter time. It's a direct and brief answer, yet very natural. And look at the topic vocabulary words that I used. Now let's continue. Now, let me give you some tips so that you will be more than ready to take the exam and for you to enjoy your conversation with your examiner. First, when unsure of the question, ask the examiner or play it safe. For example, in question two, what do you usually do during a break? The word break here has a couple of meanings. You can ask the examiner if the word break here means a short break or a long break. There is nothing wrong if you ask, especially if you want to confirm whether or not your understanding is correct. Or if you don't want to ask, you can play it safe, like how I answered that question earlier. I answered that question by talking about my 20 to 30 minutes break in the office. Then I talked about my day off and my long break from work, which is a week or two. If your answer is like that, you're completely safe. Second, equip your answer with topic vocabulary words and natural expressions. If you're aiming for a band seven or higher, you should know the right words and expressions that you need to use in every topic. But take note, you should know how to use them correctly. Otherwise, you won't sound natural. And the examiner knows if you're trying hard to use the expressions which you aren't familiar using. The last bit at the least is control your nervousness. Well, to be nervous is pretty normal. We are all humans. We do feel it. I did feel nervous during my exam as well, but I was able to manage that feeling. You have to remember that you should control this feeling. Find a comfortable way to control your nervousness. In my case, I smiled a lot to the examiner before we started the exam, and he smiled back at me, so it was my way to make myself relaxed. So do not let your nervousness overwhelm you, because if you do, you cannot answer the questions well, and you will not get your target band score. All right, let's continue. So here are the topic vocabulary words, transitioning devices, and collocations and natural expressions used in my answers. Please take a look. 
By using these words earlier, I was able to develop my answers without difficulty, and I could deliver my answers spontaneously. And this is all about IELTS speaking part one, break or break time. If you find value to this lesson, please support this channel. I humbly ask you to support this channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Thank you so much. Until the next lesson, have a lovely day.